Welcome everybody uh, back to another episode of Planet Coaster and we are in Crystal Gardens today. Uh, we are continuing on with our little like carnival midway area then from the last video where we did our boardwalk games or midway games uh, and the flying trapeze flat ride. So with every area uh, it needs a coaster and for this specific area I decided the best idea was to use a spinning coaster. Uh, now my idea in my head is that maybe at one time this actually wasn't here uh, and maybe we just had a wild mouse here so they needed to replace the wild mouse with a you know a, a good family ride that is, is basically it's good for the whole family it's like you know kids could ride it but also you know families and also teens and stuff would love it too hence the spinning factor um, it feels like I've seen other parks do this as well, where they would, you know, they replace their wild mouses or whatever, or their small family coasters or whatever, with a, uh, a spinning coaster, because they're like the whole rage and stuff right now. Um, so that was kind of my idea, you know, like, at one point this was where a wild mouse was. Uh, the wild mouse was torn down, and then this was put in its place as a great family ride. Um, as I typically do, I love to get these little paths interacting kind of with, you know, the track and stuff. Um, that way, you know, as you're walking past, you can see how the ride is actually doing. And it zooms past like a fence or something that's just, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's thrilling for something like that. And I know I overuse it a lot, but I really like it. I love to get path interactions. I love to get other ride interactions and stuff um, while also trying to stay quaint and um quaint's a good word I, I like that word but you know i don't like to compress a bunch of stuff all together as and like crunch it all together i like to space things out but i still like to have rides that interact with each other too so it's kind of a hard combination to get uh spaced out rides and you know interaction <laughs> it's got it's very very hard to do but it is possible uh as seen in this park in a, a few different places so, as you can see, the actual track itself came together with no real problems at all. Um, I kind of started, I didn't really have much of an idea of what the track and stuff would look like. It, uh, like most of my stuff, it just kind of built itself. Um, like, I just kind of let it flow the way it wanted to flow. The only thing I kind of had in mind was I wanted to get these, like, swooping areas. Kind of like waves, maybe on both sides. And maybe try to get them like uh, like you see what I'm working on right there, where one is underneath of the other one, and also have it come around by the path. Um, a helix right there, like we have, is also a great kind of feature for this type of coaster. It's not based on any actual spinning coaster. Um, I did look up different spinning coasters. I looked at some different designs and stuff. Most of them seem to be about the same designs, and I thought I wanted to do something a little more custom. Um, so while a lot of my rides and stuff are built around like something I saw from one coaster or a feature from one coaster or an element from one coaster or you know sometimes even an exact you know almost replica of the other coaster this one itself is it's completely custom and I love how it turned out uh, like I said I wanted to get those swooping wave like like turns um, like high banked turns and stuff and that way it gets a good kind of spin or at least I felt it would in reality I really feel like the cars and stuff would actually spin quite well when they would go into those um, in planet coaster terms they do not it's actually kind of hard to get the coaster the cars to spin um, but I was able to get what I wanted out of it and that was just a great looking coaster from like the view uh, I try to be with this park itself I try to be as realistic as I possibly can that's why we're doing backstage areas, which you guys haven't really seen much of, but you will. Um, and I'm trying to incorporate a lot of things that are in actual parks. One thing I don't have, and I don't know if I'm gonna actually going to go back and do it or not, is like, um, uh, uh, shoot, what am I thinking of? Um, you know where they, they where the track intersects. Uh, oh man, I can't think of what it's called. I'm gonna complete lots of words. I hate when I do that. Um, you know, where they take the cars off the track. Um, storage buildings, basically. You know, 
I know the name of it. I swear I do. Uh, I'm, I'm a coaster enthusiast. I know these things, but I'm getting old, and I forget things sometimes, especially when I'm trying to remember it right off the top of my head. But uh, anyway, yeah, these like, um, you know, where the track and stuff interacts, and it, it can, it, it's to put the tracks, the cars into storage. I swear I know the name for this. Oh my god. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't have to try to sit here and think about it because you know you know what I mean. Anyway, those are some things that I probably won't add to my coasters unless I go back and do it at another time. Maybe in phase two. I'm actually I'm still in phase one, and I'm still building on this park. Um, I've handed the park off to somebody else right now at the moment, and they are working on some stuff, but. Those are some very future episodes that are going to be anytime soon because I've still got a lot of these other videos and stuff. So we're just now hitting November of uh, footage. Um, this was recorded on November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and this is three videos combined together. So I do apologize about how it seems kind of speedy uh, and jerky and stuff. I, I hate that. I don't like it when I watch videos, but. Um, it was worse before I actually unsped it up from what I did have it at. It was a lot more fast paced and I had to turn it down a notch which makes the video a little longer. But I thought a smoother video would, you know, a longer video but smoother video would be better than to have something that just zoomed by so quick you guys didn't even see anything. And it is still quick and I do still apologize. It is still jerky. I do apologize about that as well. But at least you can kind of see the construction of it. The only thing I'm doing any, anymore on this coaster right now at the moment is, as you can see in the video, is I'm just tweaking things. The, like I said, the layout itself came together fairly quick. Like, it just really kind of flowed all together and we got this awesome layout, which I was really, really happy with. It works out great. So moving on into the next section of the video here, um, this was video number two that was combined with this one, is our signage. So I had an idea to kind of keep in line with a more midway section, um, I wanted to do these like uh, really cool custom sign on top of this. And I wanted to be seen from most all of the area. Like I wanted to be able to see it from afar. So it is tall coaster station. Uh, somebody's pointed out that um, it's not exactly in scale. I, it's in scale to me. I mean, the station itself is kind of high up off the ground a little bit. And yes, I did build it tall, but you have the station itself, plus you have a sign on top of the station, which makes it kind of tall. So I feel that it is in scale. For what I wanted to do, it's perfectly in scale. So what I decided to do was, you will see more of this in here in just a minute, but I, this is just me kind of taking the basic shapes and doing the wording and trying to get this, um, this interesting font so to speak. I'm really horrible at making custom signs, which is why I don't do it a lot. But this was one that needed it, and I had to do it because of what I had planned for in just a minute. So I tried to turn the letters just a little bit to try to get the name of the actual coaster to kind of, like I wanted to be kind of uh, like, not really exploding, but I wanted to be kind of wacky looking. And you know, like it's been like out of control letters basically because it's a spinning coaster, I thought, the perfect name for this coaster would be, of course, Wild Spin. Um, it didn't take me long to come up with the name because it is a simple name. Uh, it did take me longer to actually do this side. So I make this look easy right now. I'm probably, you're, you guys are probably thinking, wow, he's just putting this together so quick. You gotta remember, this is sped up at least probably six times speed from what I actually did it. This took me all night to do, but I did do all this in like a single night. Um, all three videos took three days, but this lettering part right here I did in a single night in about in a couple of hours of play. So yeah, this was a lot of patience. It was very meticulous to put these things together and to get everything to kind of line up right, especially on the S right here. The S was the hardest one, as you can see, trying to get these curves just right. And what I like to do is I like to put a background on it and surround them, like do a... Uh, like an outlining kind of lettering and then I changed the middle of like the P and the S's and stuff there into the same color as that. I haven't done it yet but you will see it in the next section of the video. Um, what I'm getting ready to do though is something that you guys are really really gonna like which is lighting on the sign. 
So I've already done some of the uh, the fairy tale lights across the front of the station there, down to the bottom. So we're just going to paint this, and I thought yellow was a good color, and then we're going to take the fairy tale lights up here at the top, the smallest one, and we're going to outline the letters with these um, with these fairy tale lights. Now what this does is it doesn't look like much at the start, but once it's actually done and you see it all combined it looks so good like to me it reminds me of like a, a slot machine and you know how the lighting and stuff or like a casino lighting something like that that's what it reminds me of like old 1980s casinos and stuff you know but I'm sure these are probably you know these aren't probably like regular electric lights these are most likely LEDs at this point to save the park energy because using regular lighting, um, yeah, it would have been old school, so maybe it originally had like electric lighting, but now it's more of a uh, LEDs. And by, you know, electric lighting, I mean like old school bulbs, which probably, you know, they blew out a lot, cost a lot of money. Uh, so these are most likely LEDs that has been replaced on the sign in order to save money and save electrical costs. See, I'm always thinking in my head about the actual theme park and how things would run and what kind of uh, advances and stuff that they would make. It's, it's always in the back of my mind on this park here. Um, Whitaker Lake is an experimentation and challenge mode and building a park as a park would be built. Um, Vista View is just my, let's just build it kind of park. You know what I mean? It's just like a fantasy park, but not really. It's, it's a fantasy park, but it's based on reality. But yet, I am not constricted to cash or trying to think about how things would normally operate or like could this be afforded or something it's more or less just like let's just go big or go home that's what Vista View is uh, but still not anything that's just like that's not possible kind of thing it's more or less just like yeah it's possible because we have the cash kind of thing now Crystal Gardens on the other hand is more of a this is a park that's already been built so unlike Whitaker Lake we're not building it piece by piece by piece as if it would go year by year but this is a park that is already in existence so we have to think about how things would operate and more realistic st uh, speaking so that's why I'm doing backstage areas and a lot of other stuff in this particular park so that is the difference between all three of the parks that I'm working on at the moment and I'm not even going to mention my boardwalk park because I haven't worked on it I'm kind of like I have no idea what to do with that boardwalk park, which is why I have not been doing any more YouTube streaming, uh, like live streaming on YouTube, because my whole thing with YouTube live streaming was that park. And I don't know what I want to do with it. It's like I started it, and then it's like, yeah, this looks great. And then now I'm like, I don't know what else I want to do with it. Like, I built the coaster and sort of an entrance, and that's about it. Um, so that will continue once I figure out what I want to do with it. But for now, I, I really don't know. Um, so we are in the, the third section of the videos now, which were combined on this one video, which was day three. And day three, I came back in and took the lettering here and kind of outlined it with the same kind of color of background. Just to kind of give it this like really cool, um, I don't know, like a boldness basically. Uh, outlining the letters is the perfect thing to do here for this because it really shows off the lettering and everything. Yeah, so not much else to say about this right now at the moment. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, you know, I really don't know. <laughs> Just trying to get these things to work, really. And I kind of, there for that one, you kind of seen me kind of move it in and like slant it a little bit. Uh, I kind of got the idea that maybe that could maybe work and kind of get those in there perfect. And it did. It worked great. And then we're just kind of finishing the outline in the letters here. But um, you guys can see how awesome this looks right now, close up with those lights. And of course, you can also see the minor little imperfections as well, such as on the S with the lighting. There's a lot more bulbs there on that one than the rest of them. But right here from this view, right there just a second ago, look at that. That looks awesome. And it even looks even better in the actual game than it does in this video because, again, this video is sped up. So let's continue on. Now with the sign done, we had to think about the actual station. Um, I knew how I wanted the top of the station to be. I had no clue what I was going to do at the bottom of it and how I was actually going to do the supports. So this was just kind of go with it. 
kind of thing. Um, I decided to go iron because I felt like that the way that this thing is done, uh, as high as the sign and stuff is on top of it, I really felt like it needed some beefy supports. So like regular wooden supports and a regular wooden building wouldn't do. Uh, let's just take metal and just put some iron girders and stuff in there and it's just it's built to withstand basically all the elements. That's the idea here. I also really like the colors and stuff here too. I love that we can actually paint the iron girders. Unlike a lot of things in Planet Coaster, which they left it so it's like, hey, it's one color. Sorry, you can't paint it. Um, they did actually fix it so these are paintable, which is a good thing. I'm, I'm happy with that because not being able to paint these would just make them not as useful, I feel like. But being able to paint them makes them more useful. Uh, I really feel like there should be more stuff in Planko that is paintable. And I'll be honest, we probably will never get it. So I, I think, uh, well, I'm not even going to go on that rant. Not, yeah, we're not even going to discuss it. It is what it is. We got what we got. Uh, the only thing we're going to get anymore is probably DLC, which I will happily buy because I do love this game so much. And we're just going to copy that over to the other side right here. And I even went as far as I actually put like uh, the girders and stuff and copying them all the way down the middle. I don't exactly know why I did that, but a lot of people say uh, a lot. One of my biggest complaints from people that watch my stream and stuff is like you never do anything on the inside of the coasters you just do the top of it and the outside of it and then you never do like an interior of the station or anything like that so and i get that you know the car is rolling in the station at the end and you're seeing like undone unfinished stuff underneath the, the actual station and it's just because i just like to save time and move on to the next thing um this one I did do some with, uh, especially, there is one coaster in particular, which you guys should see here soon, which I did a lot on the interior, and I've kind of started thinking more about the interiors and things because I, you know, I don't want that to be left, be like, oh, you, you didn't do those, you know. Um, I am going to do them, I think, in this park because this is my most realistic park I've ever built. It's also my favorite park right now at the moment, too. I mean, I love Vista View because Vista View is, uh, it's my, my, not really my dream park, but Vista View is my, my park I started on in the very beginning. Like, day one, Planet Coaster released, let's build this park. Uh, I had done some stuff in beta, done some stuff in alpha, but it was the day that the game actually came out when I started on Vista View. And it's gone through two iterations because I accidentally saved over top of the other one. So it is like the park that I do definitely want to finish. And make it look good but this this is my this park right here is the best work I have done by far in Planet Coaster and it just it keeps getting better you guys just have to trust me um, this is not just me saying this I'm a very humble person but this is what I've been told by people who watch my streams and stuff who have seen all the progress and stuff people have said man this is the best work you've done like everything they're saying is awesome I, they, I've been bettered myself with uh, nature. Um, I have done, my buildings are a lot better, the, the ideas and stuff, my coaster designs are better, everything about it is just really coming together. It's a great layout. I love this park and I'm not working on it currently in streams because like I said it's been it's been given to somebody else and they are doing a little bit of work on it. Uh, more about that later and uh, I will discuss that shortly. But so we are, um, yeah, we're almost at the end of this. The only thing I'm doing right now is, uh, this is basically this, you're seeing the entire construction of this coaster basically from start to finish. You're seeing the design of the actual track layout. You're seeing the signage, you're seeing the station. Now here I am doing the, uh, the, the railings. I almost forgot the name of it. <laughs> the railings right there. And you know, this is something I, I do a lot. A lot of people be like, hey, why don't you just use the railings that's on the pass? Well, there's two reasons. A, I don't like them. They're the same thing that everybody else uses. And of course this is too, but that's it's for a different reason. Um, the other reason is prestige. So every bit of scenery you add to a coaster adds to its prestige. If you go and use just the path railings that are just automatically included, you're losing out right there because a little bit of extra work 
run around here will give you some extra scenery pieces added to it, which ups your prestige, which ups the count of the people who actually are interested in your ride. It really helps a lot. Like, you seriously have no idea how much just doing your own railings can add. And also, it gives it more of a custom job. You know, I mean, I don't half-ass it, you know? Now, right here, what I'm trying to do here is put these railings on there. And I hate that Frontier didn't give us uh, railings that are, you know, like, angled like that so we could go down these paths and stuff. Um, instead, they just get them all straight, and you got these huge gaps and stuff, and it's just, it wasn't working for me. I didn't, was not happy with it. So I decided to take this little trap door thing here that's in uh, the doors under buildings and use that to my advantage here and make like a wooden kind of railing down through there. So most of it is all metal railings, and then you got the angled part, which is wood railing. It works. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, we'll make sure to put these huge steel girders right here to support the building because it was just kind of floating there. And then we're going to finish up our queue line and then from there uh, we're going to build some fences right around the area there. So a little bit of foliage work here and there. I've already done a lot of foliage before I recorded this video. Uh, you can see I put some trees and stuff. Some nice little cypress trees right there. I think they're cypress trees. Pretty sure they are. And this is the final part of the video here that we are coming up on. Uh, so I decided to make this uh, little fence right here. That way it keeps people from jumping on the track and getting hurt as well as beautifies the area a little bit and kind of goes along with everything else. I was really happy with this fence and I didn't, you know, I liked it so I decided to go with it. And we're just going to continue this fence around all around the edge of this before we go into the next area which is kind of a Frontiersville wilderness area which is going to be beyond the train tracks that I will do in the future. Well, we are here at the end of the video, guys. Um, so once again, I just want to tell everybody to please help support my channel, my YouTube channel. Uh, check me out on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. And if you're not already subscribed to me here on YouTube, make sure you do that. Go back, watch all the videos. Uh, and just, you know, support me in that way. Like, comment, subscribe as usual. I am out of here, guys. See you later. Hey everyone, if you'd like to help support me and my channel, I have a Patreon page where you can do just that. You can pledge anything from a dollar or more. Anyone who pledges $15 or more gets a unique, specially designed roller coaster from Planet Coaster made just for them. My little way of saying thanks. You can also just send donations as well if you don't want to join Patreon. And you can find those links in the video description below. Every tiny red set I make from these means the world to me and is extremely helpful. If you're interested in my PC setup that I work with and play on that you see here, every piece of the system is described below with links to Amazon if you want to purchase them or anything else.
Thanks for tuning in to my videos and my channel. If you aren't already a subscriber, click that on the screen below. And you can also check out a few of my other videos on the screen here as well. You can keep up to date on what's going on in my own little world via Twitter or watch me stream live on Twitch as well. Links are in the video description below. So wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night.